If our nation has to rely on oil shale as our last source of oil, we're in deep trouble. I'm not a big strong believer in oil shale. I guess I hope that we find an energy source other than oil before we have to really get into developing oil shale. It's very expensive, very disruptive to the environment, and takes an awful lot of water for each barrel of oil that is to be uh, recovered. Utah's deposits of oil shale and tar sands are attracting attention, again. For more than 100 years, industry has been trying to get fuel out of oil shale without commercial success. That's because turning rock into fuel is difficult. Vast quantities of oil shale rock would need to be mined, then heated to high temperatures to extract a substance called kerogen, which could then be refined into a liquid fuel. Utah tar sands are such a low-grade energy source that it's been used as road base for decades. When oil prices start to climb, however, talk of developing oil shale and tar sands inevitably gets louder. But any potential commercial development of tar sands and oil shale would require vast amounts of water and produce large amounts of pollution, a steep price for Utahns to pay. Utah has a choice to make. It could use its precious and limited water supplies for oil shale and tar sands development, or it could save those precious supplies to assure that there would be water for future population growth, for irrigated agriculture, for recreation, and for the future. Making transportation fuels from oil shale and tar sands is an inefficient, polluting, and water-intensive process. Utah is already near the limits of its available water supply, even without this kind of unconventional and unwise energy production. Those who know Utah's water best say the state may already be pushing its limit. I think that we may have over-appropriated Utah's water supply in many areas of the state. We have in, in our state this issue of uh, water rights that have been certified. That's a paper water right. And, and often in basins, we're over allocated. In other words, there's more paper water than there is wet water. That day is coming that we all knew was out on the horizon where the states will be fully utilizing their water. If Utah allows commercial oil shale and tar sands development, it will siphon water that Utah needs for future growth. Water currently used for other purposes, such as agriculture, will almost certainly be acquired by energy companies. Well, it scares me for those who follow me, for my children, grandchildren, and down the line, that we would ever get to the point that we would take the water away completely and entirely, if you will, from the agricultural industry. A look north of the border shows what can happen when dirty, unconventional fuels development is unleashed. Canada's controversial tar sands industry has created huge problems for those who live there. Alberta's tar sands development is not an example that Utah wants to follow. What we have learned is that that development has produced severe consequences to the environment. Dirty air, dirty water, impacts on wildlife, and impacts on human health. Water has always been scarce in the West, and the forecast predicts a drier future. Scientists have evidence this region is becoming hotter and drier, which means water will only become scarcer. All of us in the western states are reliant on the Colorado River, and with continued greenhouse gas emissions, we're expecting flows in the river to decline by 5 to 20 percent by mid-century. That's a huge cut in flows, and it affects all of us. 30 million people rely on the Colorado River for water. Oil shale and tar sands are not our last hope for energy. But our energy choices today will determine what happens to the last of our water. So we should be figuring out how to use less water, because we're going to have to. At the same time, we're figuring out how to emit less carbon dioxide. So you put those two things together, and what you get is a need for energy resources in the Colorado Basin that use little water and emit little CO2. But we'll find another source of energy that will continue to fuel our economy and our lifestyle. And it's not going to be, in my opinion, it won't be popular with a lot of people what I'm saying, but I don't think it's going to be oil shale. 
In a state whose very character and landscape has been shaped by natural forces like the sun and wind, there are other energy options that won't make Utah pay the price in water. You, you just can't get along without water. The human body just will not go on without water. It will go on without oil.